In today's video, I want to talk about the difference between debounce and throttle. We'll start with a quick example, and then we'll go over some common use cases. In this example, we'll be triggering a counter every time the mouse moves over the blue box. We will start by opening our HTML file and setting up the raw counter to increment every single time a mouse move event is triggered on the blue box. Next, we'll open app.js. As you can see, we have our data for the raw, throttle, and debounce counters. Next, we'll create the update raw method and simply increment the raw counter. If we go back to the browser, you can see that the raw counter is getting incremented multiple times per second. By using throttling, you would get to decide how often a function can run in a set amount of time. For example, you could decide that the counter should only update at most once per second, or once per 500 milliseconds. It's up to you. So next, to handle the throttling, we'll be using a helper's library called Lodash. It comes prepackaged with Laravel, but if you're not using Laravel, you can install it through npm. Next, we'll update our mouse move binding to add an update throttle method. We'll start by importing a lodash at the top of the file, and then wrap our update throttle method inside of the lodash throttle function. And once again, we'll simply increment the relevant counter. Next, we'll add the duration and we'll set it to one second. If we go back to the browser, you can see that the throttle counter is only updating at most once per second. Next, let's talk about debounce. Debounce allows you to delay a function until a trigger stops for at least a certain amount of time. For example, you could decide that the counter should only update if the mouse stops moving for at least 500 milliseconds. Let's go back to our HTML file once again and add another binding. Just like with throttle, we'll wrap our update debounce method inside the lodash debounce function. We'll increment the debounce counter and set the duration to 500 milliseconds. Back to the browser, you'll notice that the debounce counter only updates if the mouse stops moving for at least 500 milliseconds. And if it stops and starts too soon, it doesn't update. To demonstrate some real world usage, I've created a sample results page with a search box. We'll start by binding a search method to the input. In our app.js file, we'll be using a simple array for our results data. Next, we'll create our search method using debounce. To simulate an expensive operation, such as calling an API, we'll simply change our results to be an array with a single item. We'll set the duration to 500 milliseconds, which means the user has to stop typing for that amount of time before the search is executed. If we go back to our website, you can see that the debounce is working. Next, we'll talk about throttling. A common use case is to attach it to the Windows scroll event, which is especially useful if you want to do something expensive such as calculate an element's dimensions or scroll position if you're building an infinite scroll, for example. Back to the editor, we'll be adding an event listener for the Windows scroll event in the created lifecycle hook of our view instance. Next, we'll add our onscroll method and wrap it inside a throttle function. Here, we'll simulate loading more results from an API by adding another item to the array. Next, we'll set our duration to 1 second. If we go back to the website and we start scrolling, you can see that new results are getting loaded, but only 1 per second. This will conclude today's video. If you've enjoyed it, please consider liking it and subscribing to my channel for more videos.